Hi, I'm kind of a big deal. Today I'm going to show you the official trailer and then some bonus clips that I found of a documentary film that HBO produced. It actually came out March 26, 2020, but very good information here. It's called Kill Chain Cyber War on America's Elections. The film examines the American election system and its vulnerabilities to foreign cyber warfare operations and election interference. It's a deep dive into the weaknesses of today's election technology, an issue that is little understood by the public or even lawmakers. This is crazy, and then they tell us it's not happening, it's not happening, you're making it up, it's it's unfounded. Bull. So, I hope you enjoy this. Have a great day. Much love and peace. Thank you for watching. Voting is our capability to have a peaceful transfer of power. If you don't have that, the alternatives are revolutions. We call them voting machines, but they're nothing more than obsolete computers. 2002 is when they put them in service. A commonly used argument, they are never connected to the internet. No voting machines are connected to the internet. Not connected to the internet. Not connected to the internet, and therefore cannot be attacked. In 2016, we know that Russian actors targeted state election systems. When people say no votes were changed, it misses the point. Imagine you go in and flip the digits of everybody's address. When you prevent people from casting a ballot, you've hacked an election. Hackers are a wonderful resource. Every voting machine in this room is in use in next election. We are here three days a year. The real adversaries, they run it 24-7 with massive funding. We are in. Kari takes it personally when people do stupid things with technology. What do you think the security pin is? They upgrade to 111111. <laughs> <laughs> that was not a joke. <laughs> we may be buying the world's best 20th century military when the battlefront is election security. I had full access. I could have changed any vote. It's called a kill chain. Weaponization, paralyzation, when the governments cannot take action, that's when you finish the target. No. I am remarkably bad at this. You gotta push down. Yeah. And you have to like pull it through. Ah, uh, stop. That was, that was, that was even, less, <laughs> than, less than six seconds. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to say I give lessons yet, Matt. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Darn. It, you know, to be fair to the election officials, I didn't think it would be that easy. Me neither. I was genuinely... I mean, after I saw the guy today do it, I was like, okay, there's something to... Like, I could probably do this. Some people say that social engineering is the art of lying, but it's not just lying, it's lying for a purpose. It is to masquerade, to persuade, to do anything necessary uh, to gain trust. And that is the way how once you have established trust, you can get the people who you are dealing with to do pretty much anything you want them to do. Welcome to Silicon Valley. Wonderful. <laughs> nice to be back here. You could do some yoga. All right. If you want to get into our meditation and quiet room here. Yeah, this is definitely Silicon Valley with the yoga room. <laughs> a class of attacks, a family of attacks called phishing, is really hacking humans. It's to find a way to influence the humans so that the humans will bypass the existing technological protections for you. And the person that I'm probably going to want to call is somebody who has access within the election 
system. Um, who has access to things like uh, documents, money transfers, sharing of documents, um, who has probably sensitive emails, things mm -hmm. like that. Those are going to be my targets. And then who do those people need to trust in order to do their job? Right. And so those people that they have to trust are my pretext. Mm -hmm. That's who I'm pretending to be. Everything that I need to be able to do an effective attack, I can find on social media. Mm -hmm. I want to get a presence on the election directors network. So that's kind of what, that's kind of the situation that I'm thinking would be good. And that's exactly what uh, we yeah. think happened in the last uh, 2016 elections. And I think the best way for me to call is uh, be IT support. I am not calling a real person. This yeah. is a simulation. I'm not going to hack real people. Hi, is this Jessica? Yes, it is. Hey, Jessica. This is Allie over in IT support. I'm so sorry for calling you in the middle of the day. Um, do you no, have it's a, okay. Okay. Do you have a few minutes to chat? Yes. Okay. Um, so Jerry, let me know that they are upgrading some of their systems and they want to make sure that your system is upgraded um, and you have the most up-to-date software. So are you sitting at your computer right now? Yes, I am. Okay, fantastic. So all you really need to do is you see like by your clock, there's like a bunch of little logos. Mm -hmm, yeah, I see it. Okay, so one of them should look like a little yellow and black shield. That's semantic. Do you see that there? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so what I want you to do is just um, click on that. You're going to want to open that up. And now at the top, um, you'll see the word help. Do you see that up there? And do you see a version number? It's likely going to say 4.2, and if it does, you're good to go. Okay, yes, it does. Okay. Perfect, then you are up to date. Um, I will mark you down and all we have to do is to make sure I don't have to call you again. Um, I have to basically have you open up an email and just confirm that we did this whole thing, okay? And that you're upgraded, okay? Okay, perfect, thank you so much. All right, have a good day. You as well, bye. Okay, bye. And now you just send them out wearing. Exactly, so now that she's expecting the email, I have told her that Jerry told me to give her a call, right? I looked on LinkedIn, quote unquote, mm -hmm. and I found that that's actually um, somebody that she works with, somebody that she trusts. I use the principle of social proof mm -hmm. um, to confirm and verify with her. And uh, I'm, I'm spoofing my phone number right mm -hmm. from the real IT support. So it looks for all intents and purposes on her phone, the caller ID shows the number she should be expecting. Yep. And that's pretty much it. That's as quick as it goes. Uh, basically you can affect something like that, as serious as something like that, and you know, less than, I think it was, what, three minutes of a phone call? And it's amazingly effective. It is. Uh, Get a full presence on the you know, yep. election director's machine. And also you can use that machine then to leverage access to the, the whole network. Exactly. Anything coming in, anything going out, that can be valuable. And also, USB sticks, mm -hmm. everything going in and out of that machine mm -hmm. now can be infected to further leverage your presence to the systems which are not directly connected to networks. So right. it gets very scary very quickly. So Emerson, I have something interesting to show. Okay. I'm always curious and or potentially a little terrified. But the amazing thing was, I was able to access the gem system particular, which hosts or stores the actual live voting data. It just sounds like shockingly <laughs> poor engineering, really. Oh, it's, it's, it's all screwed up. It's, it's beyond the lead problem. So what do you think about him? He sounds like a reasonably competent web hacker who... No, I mean, like, why is he interested? Why was he poking around? At that particular time, not uh, not at all clear. I mean, the thing is, is that if you wanted to sell it all, you you wouldn't do it the day before the election. You do it a few weeks before, because it takes time to it takes time to sort out a sale and cash out and all the rest of this palaver. I've always described this as the democratization of warfare. When I was involved in the field, it was super under the radar, mm -hmm. super quiet, very covert. And you were, you know, you were very, very discreet about the whole thing. Um, and now you're not discreet at all. It's literally, no. they'll actually put up a thing which says, you know, it's like remote iOS jailbreak for iPhone, you know, X, $2 million. And it actually has a price tag on it. And, and then an email address underneath. Mm -hmm. I 
specialize is particularly known as zero day so zero day is basically a vulnerability or a loophole inside a system that no one else knows about i've been involved extensively in zero day or vulnerability assessments a professional zero day validator there are tens of thousands possibly hundreds of thousands of people all making a you know reasonable some of them making a reasonable living some of them just playing i mean and i think that what we what we see so cyberzice is interesting he's an outlier um because you know like he plainly doesn't really have a dog in the game right he's got no skin in the game he doesn't really care who wins so yes i'm a black hat hacker but that doesn't disqualifies me as not a lover of democracy and in every democracy people should have the full right or you could say rightful mindset and the privilege of electing their own government why do you care why do you care about any of this so in order for us to find a way forward we have to know where we are today and understand what is, how broken the system is and what are the fundamental problems we are facing so that we know how to plan the road ahead America has been very successful in exporting everything including exporting election technology which is broken yeah. so you as actually by their actions or the actions of the companies have made their allies vulnerable and that scares the living shit out of me i want to defend one thing and that is a rule of law oh interesting okay that, that, is, that's, that's that true. is the core value for me and that is worth defending and constitution is a big part of that but it's the ultimately it's the rule of law i found multiple instances of unencrypted files votes being sent over unencrypted ftp to a third party server. And that has been consistent. That was one of the uh, findings I believe Harry sent to Congress in his report. It does appear from my research on these limited number of machines, I'm parsing my words carefully, that the same USB drive has been inserted and removed multiple times. And there have also been numerous other drives, mice, keyboards, printers, anyone with possession of the unencrypted, unhashed USB drive, removable media containing the votes, could change that file if they were so inclined. As I've found the system so far, uh, there is no write blocker to the USB, which means anybody could walk up, insert a USB drive, and if it had malware such as the hacker term, I hate that, but called a rubber ducky, it would simulate a keyboard to let the computer know this is okay to plug in, this is okay to access, and then whatever's on that drive would execute. Again, that's just on one machine. However, one machine being infected out of any number of machines is still unacceptable. They are very basic, rudimentary systems with no security. <laughs>